please share with me the best knowledge that you can say. So then he said, he said, this human form of life is the best. Adhyam means it's the best. Why? Because if you have a low birth in the lower planets, there's too much suffering. And you cannot focus on bhakti. And if you go to the higher planets, why the Lord is too much enjoyment? <laughs> and you cannot focus on bhakti. But here, in this human life, we are just the right checks. We can get the perspective on things. And also, on this earth planet, see Krishna himself comes and manifests Brindavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes and manifests my poor now deep down. So to have this human body on this earth planet, this is the best. <laughs> it comes automatically, naturally. After many lifetimes in this world, we gradually, suffering, rise up from the lower species and get this human form of life. <coughs> and this human body is It is a boat. And boats are made to go on a voyage. On a journey. But if you get on a boat, you cannot go on a voyage unless there's a captain. <laughs> Otherwise, one will be inexperienced at sea and get lost. So, Pavan Sukalpa, Guru Karna Dhara, on this boat, one should accept a guru. Guru is, co- is called Karna Dhara. Karna Dhara also means captain of a boat. It literally means Karna is ear, and Dhara means what it holds. That means when you're going in the wrong direction in your life, then Guru grabs you by the ear and says, No, not that way, this way. No. Orients us towards our goal when we're becoming confused or lost, bewildered. So, Mayanu Puyena Navasta Veritam. And for the boat to move, you need favorable wind. Favorable wind. So, that favorable wind is Krishna Kripa. The mercy of Krishna. But if you have a boat and the wind is blowing but you didn't put up the sail, then the boat will not move. So we also have to do something. We have to hoist the sail. It's a little bit of hard work. That means our sadhana. If we will perform our sadhana very carefully every day with persistence, with determination, with humility, with surrender, with dependence on the mercy of Krishna, then in the sale of our sadhana, the mercy of Krishna will blow and we'll begin our voyage. Pumam Bhavatim Natret Sahmaha. And where is this voyage taking us? Across the ocean of material existence. Once there was a poor person. He was suffering in poverty so much. And one day he found a sparsha money, a touchstone. Sparsha money is such a jewel that if you touch it to iron, it will transform iron into gold. But this person, he was not very bright. He was a bit dull headed. And he looked and thought, oh, it's a piece of glass. And he threw it in the mud and continued in his suffering condition. So this is a parable for us. One who doesn't use this human form of life to cross over the ocean of material existence is exactly like that poor person. All their problems, all of his problems were solved, but he didn't know it. And due to negligence, inattention, and foolishness, he lost that opportunity. So we don't want to be like this. 
זו פעם יותר מסרי, סרי גדול כדאי. כלומר, ברבים נא תרד צעת בה. One who does not use the human form of body to cross over the ocean of material existence is knowingly committing suicide. Atma, killing themselves. So it's very tragic. If we hear that someone has committed suicide, oh, that's so terrible. But actually everyone's committing suicide. Who is not doing Krishna Bhajan. very fortunate to have this human body and to have very qualified elevated guru spiritual master so now we have to go on the voyage every day practicing bhakti and we should be very enthusiastic why because where are we going we're going to the land of brain the land of transcendental love What is this brain? Samyan, Samyan Masri class on to Mama Kati Shayam Kita Bhava E Sai Vasandakta Budai Prema Nigatite Srila Rupa Goswami Pai said When the heart becomes so soft it melts completely and becomes totally liquid So there are many waves of ecstatic emotion for Sri Krishna And when the heart is Mama Kati Tisha Ankita, Atishai, that means excessive mamata possessiveness. Oh Krishna. Oh Nanda Nanda, son of Nanda Maharaj. Oh Radha Kanta, you are mine. Bhava Sai Vasandatma. And the Ananda, the joy of this feeling of possessiveness for Krishna, is a Sandra Ananda. Not Ananda joy, Sandra Ananda. Extremely condensed joy. It's the very nature of prema. So, Budai, prema ni gatsite. Sarabhatar vang saraita satipi vang sakarne yad bhava vangganam yuna sa prema parakirtita. This love is such that even if many obstacles come to break that loving relationship, it can never be broken. It increases moment by moment. So, once the devotee attains that love for Krishna, then all of the problems, all the reverses, all the adversity in his life actually stimulates and makes the brain grow more and more. But, there's one condition. If you want to go to the land of love, then you'll have to leave your head behind. <laughs> Don't bring your head. Persons without heads Persons with heads cannot live in the land of prayer. Just like our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Snana Darashana Bhavajan Deya Swabhavai Kumarera Chakadena Satata Piralai When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was staying in Jagannath Puri, he was taking bath in the ocean. He was walking to the temple. He was taking prasada. But how? Just like a potter puts some clay on a wheel and then he mm -hmm, gets the wheel spinning. And once the wheel spinning, he has two hands free to make his pot. So in the same way, the life 24 hours a day of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was just turning around like the potter's wheel. It was only Deha Swabhav, his body. Was, it was his nature to wake up, go here, go there, and everything. It was a day of So a sadhak in this world who is approaching, bath, and then praying. Only they're walking, talking, going here and there. It's going on. They're bathing. It's resting. It's going on only by some samskars. Day has bath. Some previous samskars. The body's gone. But in the heart, their two hands are completely free to be absorbed in a manasik seva 24 hours a day serving the lotus feet of Radha Krishna in the Nikunjas of Praja. So that is brain. Don't think that to attain brain you'll be exactly like you are now but with some brain added to it. No. As you are now, has to die. Rest in peace.
die to live. So he said that if you want to go to the city of praying, you have to leave your head behind. Those who are thinking, those that is, those who are preoccupied with existential issues. Where will I live? What will I eat? Who will take care of me when I grow old? All these things. No, can't go. There's one point. It says that once, by the will of providence, praying, Baran Brain personified, came down to earth. And she was looking for a place to live. Just like if you're traveling anywhere, you arrive in a town, you have to look around, check Airbnb, look for a place to stay. So praying personified came to earth, and she was looking around, where can I stay? And she was asking from the people who had heads, can you tell me, where is the person with no head? Where does he live? Where is the person with no head? I want to know, if you know where he lives, let me know. Because that's where I stay. So praying will never go to that person who is preoccupied with any worldly worries. So Sri Bhaktivinoda was it for surrender. Atmani Vedana Chuya Parikori Hoyinu Paramasuki Dukha Ture Gelo Chintana Rohilo Chaudi Ke Anandu Deki Oh my Lord Sri Krishna, since I surrendered my heart to you, I have become supremely happy. All of my worries have gone far away and I see only joy in all directions, everywhere. You know that there's nothing bad. Nothing bad ever happened in the past. Nothing bad is happening now and nothing bad will ever happen in the future. If you don't agree with me, you're in Maya. That's illusion. That's illusion. Om Puram Vada Punamina. Supreme Lord is perfect. His creation is perfect and everything is perfect. But one thing which is not perfect, our eyes. How we see. So those who are in the worries and tribulations, in anxiety and distress, they cannot obtain prayer. First surrender. And accept, oh, Krishna, everything is your mercy. And leave your head behind. Then the possibility comes to enter into the city of brain. One poet named Rasikotans, he said, Alas, alas, I have not drunk nectar between the sun and the moon. Alas, alas, I never objected to the return of Sita and Ram to Ayodhya. Alas, alas, I never dipped my dreadlocks in the Ganges and then made an offering, and tried to offer my head to Lord Shiva. And even though I have not done all of these things, why do I still want to become a brainy? Why do I want to become a person full of brain? Because it's futile, it's hopeless. So this is Gaudiya, this is poetry. In poetry, what is expressed is not expressed directly. Krishna said, Paraksham Mamacha Priyam. I like the indirect expression. So the meaning is, alas, alas, I have never drunk nectar between the sun and the moon. Perhaps you know that once the demons and demigods churned the ocean of milk and Danvantari came from the ocean with a pot of nectar. And then everyone was quarreling over it. So Supreme Lord appeared in the form of Mohini Murti and she said, if you agree, I'll distribute the nectar. Sit in two lines. Demons this side and demigods that side. So then the demons, because she was a very beautiful woman, and they were thinking, oh, tonight I may get lucky. So I'll just agree with her and flatter her and whatever she says, I'll do that. So then they were being very nice and said, of course, are you just do the nectar, of course. No problem, we'll sit in a line. And the demons sat down in a line 
And the demigod sat down over there in another lake. So then Mohini Murti took the pot of nectar and she walked over to the demigods. And she was looking at the demons and smiling. They were smiling back. <laughs> and she was just giving the nectar one by one to the demigods. The demons, they were so lusty, they didn't want to get into her bad books. So that's why they were hesitant to say anything. But one of the demons, his name is Rahu. So Rahu thought, I have a plan. He disguised himself as a demigod. And he went and sat down in between the sun god and the moon god. And he was sitting there, waiting. So Mahini Moti was giving nectar, nectar, then it came to his turn. And he just had one drop, touched his tongue. And then the sun and the moon realized, hey, wait, 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 this is not one of us, this is not a demigod. This is a demon. So then Supreme Lord in his form of Ajit, by his chakra, he cut off the head of Rahu. So his body died but the head was living because it touched the nectar. So every now and then, because Rahu hates the sun and the moon, he attacks them. And that's called the solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. So here, the poet is crying, alas, alas, why did I not sit down and drink nectar between the sun and the moon? Because then, my head would be removed and I would be able to. <laughs> because only those without a head can attain brain. <laughs> alas, alas, why did I not object to the return of Sita and Ram from Ayodhya? Why? Because when Ram and Sita came back from Ayodhya, one night Ram was in disguise and he was going around the city. And he saw that one wife of a washerman, she was late after dark and returning home. And that's illegal in Vedic society that your wife comes home alone after dark. So she came back and the husband had locked the door. That's it, I'm not letting her. She was not Open the door, open the door. That washerman said, no, no, I'm not going to let you in. You stayed out after dark. Then the washer lady said, oh, come on. Sita was away for so many days after dark. And Ram still took her back. The washerman said, well, I'm not like that Ram, I follow Dharma. And thank God, Rantabha. People are using my example to go against Dharma. I am the king. It's my responsibility to set the proper example for Dharma. So he decided, and because of this, to send Sita Devi to the forest to the Ashrama Valmiki Rishi. But actually that washerman was a great offender. And in his next life, he was also a washerman. For Kamsa Maharaj. So perhaps you know that when Sri Krishna came to Mathura, now the boy from the dairy farm is in the big city with his friends for the first time. And then marching around looking at the skyscrapers, Akasha Chumbi. The skyscrapers called Akas Chumbi in Sanskrit means sky kisses. So they're looking around and they came across his washerman. And he had lots of beautiful silk cloth. See, Krishna said, well, can you give that cross to me? He said, no, no, this is for Kamsa Maharaj. Then Krishna <laughs> removed his head. But alas, alas, I still have my head. So I cannot get prayer. Alas, alas, why didn't I wash my matted locks in the Ganga? And then the, go to offer my head to Shiva. You know who did that? Vrikasur. And when he was about to offer his head to Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva appeared there and said, I'll give you a benediction. He said, give me the benediction that who, whoever's head I touch, that it will explode. Lord Shiva said, Tatastu. So now he had the benediction, he thought, let me test it on Lord Shiva. So he said, I'll test it now on you. And Lord Shiva was afraid because he'd given the benediction and he was running. He ran here and there with Rikasur going after him. No one could save him. Finally, he took shelter of Krishna. Krishna said, don't worry, I'll take care of this. And Krishna appeared in the form of a beautiful brown boy. He said, hey, Rikasur, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to catch Lord Shiva. I'm going to explode his head. Oh, you didn't fall for that trick again? 
Lord Shiva, he's such a liar. He gives so many benedictions that don't come through. Are you such a fool that you believe him? He said, well, why not? He's my guest today. Krishna smiled, he said. Oh, I tell you, it's just a trick. Don't go here and there and make a fool of yourself. Just invite it, just test it. <laughs> just put your hand on your head to test it first. Before you make a fool of yourself in public. So Krishna's so beautiful and charming. Oh, yeah, good idea. <laughs> Then Prakash Sutta, she said, uh, <laughs> So, alas, alas, why am I not like Prakash Why do I still have this head? Hmm? This head, this intelligence, this ego, they can't understand anything about praying. Because praying is so full of reversals, viparya. It is said, praying in Adisada Uttavahida, the river of praying always flows in the opposite. Water usually flows down, but the river of praying flows up. It's full of many mm, viroad, contradictions. Just like it is said, the demigods pray to Sri Krishna in the womb. Satya Pratam, Satya Param Trisatya, O Krishna. Your words are true, your vows are true. You are true in the past, you are true in the present and true in the future. You are the absolute truth. But in Vrindavan, because of praying, if Krishna is a little baby, he will eat dirt. And his friends told him, uh, his mother, so mother's shoulder came from the kitchen, oh, I give my boy so much good food, and he's eating dirt. Hey, Lala, come here. Have you been eating dirt? Hmm? No, I am not eating dirt. But wait a minute, the demigods just prayed and said that Krishna always tells the truth. But because of the power of praying of Madhya Shoda, hmm? Krishna forgets his Bhagavata. He forgets that he's God, he's just a child. And just as a child, he's afraid of the chastisement of the parents and out of anxiety and out of the, um, just being completely uh, worried. What will mother say? Then they spontaneously tell lies. Children do. And the parents, you know, they relish it also. So to met, right? Because the mother's in here. <laughs> it's part of the, the parental love. So Krishna is so kind. He, he causes his devotees to taste the nectar of praying. Where the absolute truth himself is telling a lie. Don't think that only Krishna tells lies because of brain. Even mothers tell lies because of brain. Yeah. <laughs> One day, I'll be loud. No, that's something else. But that's a good example. I'll be loud. Do you know about the I'll be loud? Oh, come and crash my cup right now. I'll take you there. I want to tell something else. One day, Madhya Shoda in the morning came to her son. He said, Oh Lala, come, come now for breakfast. Come and eat something. He said, No mother, it's a Kadasi today. I'm going to follow a Kadasi. She was amazed. She looked at her friends. She looked at her sakis. Pivri Tongi Kogala, the aunties of Krishna. He said, I thought that you were my friends. But now I know that amongst you, one of you is my enemy. Who has told my son about the Kadasi? <laughs> he becomes king. Out of love. Though Krishna is the protector, maintainer of all the universes, but Madhya Shoda is thinking, if one day only he'll fast, he becomes king in me. I cannot tolerate it. Who is told my son? Hmm? She called him, come, come on Krishna, take a bath. Krishna said, no, no, it's a Kadasi. I'm going to take bath in the Yamuna. <laughs> but the Yashoda said, but I've prepared some very nice warm water for you. Be in comfort, be here in the house. 
very warm and fragrant water, the bath is like, come, come, don't go there. Who told him about the cats? But Krishna was still insisting that he wanted to go. So Mother Yashoda said, oh, Lala, don't you know that if you go there to the bank of the Jamuna, in this season there are many dry leaves that have fallen from the trees. And under the dry leaves are hiding Bakasura and his friends. And they'll jump out and eat you. Don't go, just stay here and have a nice warm bath. Hmm? Was Bakasura waiting there? No. We read in the Vedas. Satyam Bada Dharma Charo. Always follow Dharma, always tell the truth. But you have to get rid of your head now. Because if you want to go to the land of brain, all that is upside down. In that land of love, See Krishna plays upon his flute. And the Prax Gopis are in their homes. They're trying to do their housework. Chittam Sukhena Bhavata Paritam Grihesu. But when they hear the beautiful sound of Sri Krishna's flute, they cannot. They cannot check themselves. They want to drop everything and run. Is that Dharma? To leave your housework and leave your husband and meet with another man. But in the land of love, that is the highest expression. But as gopis are trying so hard to hold themselves. One gopi said, Oh my dear Saki, I want to go. Because I cannot remember the laws of the Vedas. Because four Vedas have come from the four mouths of Lord Brahma. Hmm. You know, for ordinary people, village people, hmm. and what do they believe? They just believe what everyone else believes. Right? You go along with the, with the majority. What everyone says is you go along with that. And if some minority person says something, it's not taken seriously. Right? That's the nature of simple people. So the, that go be saying, how can I follow Dharma? When Brahma has spoken the Vedas with four mouths, but this flute of Krishna has eight mouths. Eight mouths are speaking. Come on, come on. Come to the forest, dance with me. Another gopi said to Vasaki, O oh, Saki, you know that in ancient times there was a king. And he was very wicked. Even in his childhood he was so wicked, he was so cruel, that when he was playing with his friends, sometimes just for fun, he would kill him, kill one of his friends. So he was very wicked. And when he grew up, then he became in charge of, the, of his empire. And he was so much against Dharma, so much against religion. He told his servants, Na yastavyam, na dhatavyam, na hotavyam, juja kochit, iti nyavaranam dhamam, very go shayin asarabashaha. Take kettle drums and go out into all the streets of my kingdom and beat the kettle drums and tell everyone, Na yastavyam, na dhatavyam, no one should do follow dharma. Don't make any fire sacrifices, don't give in charity. Don't serve the Brahmanas. Announce it everywhere. Dharma has been cancelled. But what happened? When the Brahmanas saw how wicked he was, they got together and made a plan. And by mantras, they killed that king. So one gopi is telling my friend, O oh, Saki, I think that that king, when he was killed by the Brahmanas, afterwards, he took birth here in Braja. And he was so embarrassed about his past activities, he wanted to hide his previous history so he could continue with his nefarious activities, unrecognized. So that king, you know his name, Vena, King Vena, in this life, to hide his past history, he changed his name to Venu. <laughs> 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 
Venu has changed his name to Venu, and now he's come, and he's now he's the Venu, Krishna's flute, and calling out everywhere. Don't do your dharma, don't serve your husband, don't clean your house, don't show the mail, come to the forest. So in that land of love, oh, dharma becomes adharma. And adharma becomes dharma. Everything becomes reversed. Sometimes, Radha and Krishna, when they're in separation from each other, it's so intolerable, so painful. Because when they meet in the kunjas of Vrindavan, na so ramana na hama ramani tu mana manupath peshla jami, it's as if Cupid himself comes and he melts their hearts and they mix together. So after that, when they go back to their homes, it's intolerable to be without each other. So she met Radhika, she went into the forest and came to a kunj. And there were so many ornaments for her. Brenda Day had arranged so many ornaments for her. And also so many ornaments for Krishna. <laughs> but Radhika was thinking so much, remembering Krishna, that she forgot herself. No head. She completely forgot herself. And seeing, being absorbed in Krishna, she thought, Krishna, huh? I am Krishna. And seeing the ornaments of Krishna, she began to pick them up and decorate herself. With a peacock feather. With a beetle boy. Took a flute. And then she came out of the sun, out of the kunj. And her sakis were there. And she began to play the flute. And all the sakis ran to her. Just like when Krishna plays the flute and the gopis run and meet with Sri Krishna. And she began to play. But the Rasalila is never complete without Radha. So this is a big problem because Radha is now Krishna. And the Sakis, the Gopis are there. But there's no Radha. So then, Purna Masi Devi, she was thinking, there's one missing ingredient. So she called one Saki. Oh Saki, I know where Krishna is just now. He went to one kunj on the back of Jaguna. You should go there at once and bring him here. So then that's a key one. So Krishna is saying Bhagavad Gita, Yaya Tamam Prabhatyante, that's the Thai Yoga. I reciprocate with everyone. Whatever mood of love a person has to him, Krishna has the same mood in, in reciprocation to them. Krishna cannot fully reciprocate with Radhika. But something, something is there. He tries. So Krishna was sitting alone and he was remembering Radhika. And he became so absorbed in remembering Radhika that he forgot himself and thought that I am Radhika. But then he looked down and saw that his arm was sham color. Krishna's color is like Jiva Goswami said, there's one flower called Kalaya, Kalaya Pushpa. Kalaya Pushpa means the uh, dark sweet pea flower. You see, it's very beautiful. Dark but bright somehow. So seeing his own charm complexion, but having the Abhiman, I am Radha, Krishna thought, Oh, it must be a dark moon night. Because on the dark moon night, when Radhika is going secretly through the forest to meet with Krishna, at that time, she smears her whole body with kasturi. Dark, sham colored kasturi. So she becomes dark, and then she puts on a dark blue cloth, and she wears a beautiful garland of an indivara, blue lotus flowers. So that when she's sneaking out of the village and going through the forest, then no one will, she will not be bright. If she were wearing bright colors and, and diamonds, that everyone would see her. So on the dark moon, she dresses in the bluish colors. 
So Krishna, in the Abhimana Radhika, saw his own charm colored arm, and said, oh, I was forgetful for a moment, but now I remember what I was doing. I had just decorated myself fully with Kasuri. And as Krishna was thinking that, that gopi who was sent by Bona Vasudevi, she arrived there. She walked into the kunj, and Krishna said in a very soft and sweet voice like a cuckoo, Oh, Sumuki, you have arrived just in time. I have already applied the kasturi. Now all I need is the dark blue cross, dark blue ancha, and the gone the blue lotus flowers. So this took that Saki by surprise. <laughs> so Krishna's calling me Sumuki, beautiful faced one, and speaking in a sweet voice, just like my, my Saki, my Swamini Shimati Radhika. And she was astonished by the profound bhava of praying of Sri Krishna. So then she was thinking, the Naika is there. And I came here to get the Dayak, that means the heroine. I came from the heroine to bring the hero to go and be with the heroine. But now I'm here, the hero thinks he's the heroine. So now what will happen? No rasa. How will there be rasa? There has to be Visha and Ashra. You can't have two Ashrais. Two shelters of this. So she will do it. So she thought, let me snap Krishna out of this. Hmm? Let me just take a mirror. So then that Saki, she picked up a large mirror and she held it in front of Krishna. So then, when she held it in front of Krishna, Krishna saw in the mirror, Krishna. Hmm? But because he was in the Atimana of Radhika, then he said, oh, Krishna has come. Now Krishna wears a book with a crown. And sometimes it's quite big and very ornate, right? You've seen in Bharati and Vrindavan, the Mukhas of Krishna. So, because Krishna was actually Krishna, and he was wearing a Mukut, but thinking I am Radhika, then he felt like the Mukut was a part of yogurt. <laughs> so then, Radhika, seeing Krishna in, reflected in the mirror held by the Saki, she quickly put up her hand, both hands, and Grab the pot of yogurt. Like this. Hmm? To hold it. So the Krishna will not steal it. But when she saw her own com complexion reaching up to hold the pot of yogurt, she saw the reflection in the mirror. Krishna is like this. So as, as you know, in Vedic culture, if you want to humbly request something from someone, then you fold your hands up. Like Krishna told to the gopis when he stole their clothing. Hmm? Oh, they were covering their bodies like Krishna. No, no, no. You have to apologize to the god of the water like this. So when Krishna put his hands up to thinking I'm Radhika, trying to catch my pot to save from being stolen by Sri Krishna, at the same time she saw Krishna going like this. So then Krishna said to his reflection, Oh, Ari Lampat, you devotee, I don't care how many times you beg me, I'm not even going to give you one drop. Aheri Ragati Prayna Subhava Kutil Halavit. This is the nature of praying, very, very crooked. So even though Radhika is overwhelmed with praying for Krishna, but it manifests in man, in a, con in a contrary mood. So then that Saki was, she could not believe. I tried to bring him out of the mood of Radhika with the mirror. But they didn't go more deeply into, a, into the Lila. So eventually, she brought uh, Krishna to the place where Radhika was. And they played together, Vipari to the last. That means Krishna playing Radhika's role and Radhika playing Krishna's role. After this Lila, then Krishna, he thinks to himself, Oh, that was so sweet. So beautiful. This, I experienced something of the love Radhika has for me. But not fully. I want to fully taste it. So it is the praying. Radhika, Prema Guru, Anisisana, 
Ama sarana na mitte ila chay ulpaj. Radharani is Krishna's praying guru. Her love is teaching him newer and newer pastimes that he never thought were possible. The praying of Radhika is teaching Krishna. So Krishna had a very strong desire. Krishna Ramaduri Krishna ne up joy lob Sanya Kaswadi Tinahi Rahi Manek Shob Shri Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pai said Krishna seeing in the mood of Radhika his own reflection, his own sweetness he thinks, oh, I want to taste that sweetness fully but I cannot and so the that desire in Krishna was unfulfilled Rahi Manek Shob and he felt some perturbance some disappointment in his heart. But you know that Yoga Maya, Uprawada Maya, the Leela Shakti, she can fulfill everything. Perhaps you know that Radhika herself, she also does puja. Who is the Ishtadeva of Radhika? Sun God. Surya. Surya, yes. Radharani worships the Sun God. Sometimes she goes to Surya Kund. It's about three kilometers from Radha Kund. Or sometimes she goes to Vrindavan, the hill where now there is the temple of Radha Mohan. That is a one yoga priest, meeting place of Radha Krishna called the Dwaras Aditya Tila. So that is also a place where the Sun God is worshipped. And it's surrounded by Prashkanda Tirtha, full of red roses. You worship Lord Shiva with Baal. You worship Vishnu with Tulsi. You worship Durga with Hibiscus. But for Surya Dev, you have to offer red roses. So Radhika often, on the pretext of going to worship Surya Dev there, meets with Sri Krishna in Vrindavan. So one day, Radhika came and worshipped Surya Dev and bowed down to him. And she was thinking, Pida Abhina Vakala Kuta Katata Garavasya Nirvasano Nisyan Dena Mudam Sudama Durimahankara Sankochana Krishna Prema Sundari Nanda Nanda Naparoi Jagati Yasyantare Gyayante Sputamasya Vakra Madaraste Naiva Vikrantaya. How is this praying for Krishna? It is like a mixture of amrita, nectar, and poison. So, pita, abhina, vakala, kuta, katakata, garabasthanir, vasano. There's a deadly poison called kalkut. No one can survive this poison. Only Lord Shiva. As long as he doesn't swallow it, it keeps it in his But, if someone develops brain, this praying for Krishna of Brajan, of Brajan Gopis, then they feel more excruciating agony caused by the power of that praying than someone who has drunk Kalkut Bish. So Karvasya Rasana, that poison was very proud, I am a deadly poison. But when Kalkut Bish sees the praying of the Gopis of Vrindavan, then his he becomes Kanada Bish more humble than a bedroom. I have no power to give pain compared to the pain of separation that the Brajya Gopis feel. Nisyandeinas mudam sudama durmahankar sankochana and amrita, the nectar which the demigods drink which makes them strong and healthy and feel extreme pleasure. But when the amrita saw the happiness, the joy that the Brajya Gopis feel, in their love for Sri Krishna. Then, Hankara Sankochana. Sankoch means hesitant and shy. Now the ego of Amrita to give happiness to others. Amrita became very shy, excuse me. <laughs> but only a person who has experienced the attack of this Krishna brain can understand its simultaneous sweet and crooked effect. So when Radharani came before the Sun God, she bowed down. And she prayed, O oh, Surya Dev, okay. 
in his love for me, Sri Krishna experiences great joy. But in my love for Krishna, I also experience great joy. But I also experience great pain. So, Surya Dev, I am begging you, please give me this benediction. As I love Krishna, let Krishna not love me in that way. That he should not feel that pain. Please give me this benediction. But you know, this love of Raj is extremely crooked. Though Radharani was saying this from her mouth, but the meaning was different. Who's going to go to a Delhi garden, bow down and worship and say, please don't give me that benediction I didn't ask for? Huh? So it means that in her heart she was thinking, one day, also oh, your day, let Krishna feel what I am feeling. And because of this prayer, only because of this prayer. So Krishna, who sometimes experiences the mood of Radhika due to absorption and separation, he appeared within this world as Sri Sachinandan Govari. You know, if you have some money, let's say you only have a hundred dollars, and a friend comes to you, oh, can I borrow ten dollars? Yes, sure. Then another one, can I borrow fifty dollars? Another friend comes, now you hesitate. <laughs> well, no, no, you ask someone else. Because yeah? it's your money. So now Krishna has appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Krishna appeared before, 5,000 years before, then Shukadeva Goswami said, Mukti in the Dati Kaichisman about the yoga. Krishna easily gave Mukti, but very rarely would he give Bhakti. Because if someone gets Bhakti, now he becomes their servant. He becomes under their control. So if you ask Krishna, oh Krishna, can you give me Gopi's brain? Do you want Mukti? Yes. Gopi's brain? No. But now, see, Krishna has appeared completely absorbed and imbued in the frame of Radhika. Hmm? So, if there's a big pile of money, it's not yours, and someone comes and says, oh, can you give me a hundred dollars? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> Another person, yes, <laughs> it's not yours. What is not yours, you can easily give away. So now, Krishna has come with an ocean of brain, it's not his. And anyone who's coming, and praying to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Chandra, Mama Devi Padhavalangam, O Sachinandan Gohari, please give me the shelter of your lotus feet. Please bestow upon me the Raja praying. Now Krishna is saying, take, take, take. <laughs> and distribute to everyone. Through the chanting of the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna,